Hey guys, so this video is on formula mass and the mole. So formula mass, um, it's just the sum of the average atomic masses of all the elements in a compound. We know we can look up the average atomic mass for any element just by looking at a periodic table. Um, if it's a molecule that we're talking about, molecule means all of the elements in the compound are non-metals, then we can also call that a molecular mass. So for example, for ethanol, which is CH3, CH2OH, you would calculate the formula mass by adding up the average atomic mass of all the elements times how many atoms of that element there is there are in one molecule of the compound. So in ethanol, there are one, two atoms of carbon. So this two times the average atomic mass of carbon plus six hydrogens, three plus two plus one is six, times its average atomic mass, and one oxygen times its average atomic mass. Add them up, we get the uh, formula mass or molecular mass for ethanol, 46.069 AMUs. For potassium dichromate here, same idea. Um, I'll use this example because I want to uh, point something out about sig figs to you guys. So same idea, two potassiums, two chromiums, seven oxygens. Um, by the way, these numbers here, the numbers of atoms are exact numbers. Um, the average atomic masses, of course, are not. So we have two potassium times its average atomic mass, two chromiums times its average atomic mass, and seven oxygens times its average atomic mass. Now look, when we do the multiplication, okay, we use the rule for multiplication, which says we count how many sig figs we have. Well, we have five, five, and five. So when we multiply these out, we get five sig figs. That's all fine, three past the decimal still. But here, with chromium, two times this is 103.992. Well, we're only allowed to keep five sig figs, which puts us at two past the decimal, and the same thing with oxygen. So when we go to add them up, again, we use the rule for addition, which means we look at what place the last sig fig is in, two past, two past, well, three past. We can only keep two past the decimal in our answer. Um, now, for the last example, aluminum sulfate dodecahydrate, um, same idea. I just wanted to show you, how, make sure you understand how it works with parentheses and hydrates. So we have two aluminums times its average atomic mass. Now, when you have parentheses, if there's a subscript outside of the parentheses, that subscript applies to everything inside. So we have three times one is three sulfurs times its average atomic mass. Three times four is 12 oxygens here, plus 12 times one is 12 makes 24 oxygens times its average atomic mass. And then 12 times 2 is 24 hydrogens times its average atomic mass. And just like we did up here, when we multiply these out, it ends up we only get to keep 2 past the decimal in our answer, um, which gives us 558.83 AMUs. Now, you should guys, you guys should check this and put this in your calculator, um, as always. <clears throat> so next, the mole. Um, M-O-L-E. Um, it's the SI unit of amount, the abbreviation, the only abbreviation we get, guys, is MOL. M is not mole, it's MOL. Um, it's the amount of substance. Um, and actually, the definition was just changed about a year ago, a year and a half ago. Um, and this is the new definition, the one we use. One mole contains exactly, this is an exact number here, 6.02214076 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever's in um, that mole. Um, it's, it's really an easy concept once you get it. If you think about a dozen, it's exactly the same idea. If I say I have one dozen eggs, you guys know that that's another way of saying I have 12 eggs. Well, this is kind of like the chemist's dozen. If I say I have one mole of something, that's just another way of saying I have 6.022140.76 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing. You should definitely memorize this number, but you know, we're going to only need to memorize the first four sig figs. So we'll use... 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Um, this number is called Avogadro's number. The symbol is N sub A, um, number Avogadro. Uh, but just remember that it, when we use 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, that is not an exact number. And if we need more sig figs, we can always come back here. This whole number, this is exact. If we go out to the six, that's an exact number. Um, which also makes it a conversion factor. We can convert between moles of something and numbers of things. One mole of whatever is equal to Avogadro's number of that thing. And you'll see this in just a moment. So, an example. How many grains of sand are there in 3.141 moles of sand? Well, dimensional analysis, the units of first two steps, the units of answer and starting point. 
answer the units of answer will be grams of sand grains excuse me grams grains of sand and our starting point will be your grains of sand in what 3.141 moles of sand the only conversion factor we need for this problem is Avogadro's number one mole of sand equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd grains of sand um, if you look back at that previous previous side class, all I did was I that blank that I had there, I, re, I just replaced that with what it is in this sand or grains of sand. All right, so now the um, that was the third step in the dimensional analysis, writing down our conversion factors, the fourth and the fifth steps, set up the equation, get our answer and round. So how many grains of sand is equal to 3.1 for moles of sand? We see moles of sand in the numerator. It goes in the denominator here, right there. That means Avogadro's number goes on top, moles of sand cancel. We have four sig figs because of this number, well, also this really. And so it ends up being, the answer is 1.892 times 10 to the 24th grains of sand. That's a large number, guys. That's a really big number. You're going to see how large in just a moment, I think. So let's look at it the other way. Um, and I, I did a rough calculation, and I found that, you know, making a whole bunch of assumptions, but it's, you know, in the neighborhood anyway, that there's about 7.5 times 10 to the 18th grains of sand on all the beaches and deserts on earth total, right? How many moles of sand is that? Well, same thing, same idea. Um, dimensional analysis, units of answer and starting point. How many moles of sand is equal to 7.5 times 10 to the 18th grains of sand? The only conversion factor we need, once more, is Avogadro's number, one mole of sand is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd grains. So when we do this, okay, how many moles of sand equals that many grains? Now Avogadro's number goes in the denominator, and we get 0 0.00001244 moles of sand. So on, so so this is a reasonable, you know, reasonably close, right, to, to the reality, at least you know, order magnitude kind of thing. So think about that. That's huge. Every single beach on earth, every desert, add every single grain of sand up on all of those. And it's like a f one times 10 to the fifth moles. So that gives you maybe a, a feeling for, for how much you know, a mole of something is. It's a really large number. Um, it ends up we, we need it in chemistry because atoms are so small. And that's why we have so many of them. We use this number. All right, so next, guys, is molar mass. The definition of molar mass of anything is the mass in grams of exactly one mole of that thing. The units of molar mass are grams per mole. Um, and usually when we talk about molar mass, we're talking about the molar mass of an element or molar mass of a compound. Um, what's really nice is it ends up that the molar mass for any element is exactly the same number as its average atomic mass which means we can look at the periodic table and we can look up not only the average atomic mass for any element, but also the molar mass. In other words, if you look at the periodic table now and you look at carbon, C, it says 12.011 underneath the C. That means that the average atomic mass of carbon is 12.011 AMUs. It also means that the molar mass of carbon is 12.011 grams per mole. Okay, think about this for a second, guys. That means that if we have exactly one mole of carbon, we have 12.011 grams of carbon. All right, so, and that, by the way, is also a conversion factor, as you'll see. But first, let's, um, let's do some calculatings of molar masses. So, let's say you need to find the molar mass of cobalt to nitrate hexahydrate. Well, the first thing we do, guys, is we use our nomenclature to figure out what the formula is, and it ends up that this, this is what it is. Which, by the way, is a good opportunity for you guys to go back, check your nomenclature, and make sure how that, so that's the formula. But what we want to do is find the molar mass. So we calculate it exactly like we did the formula mass a few minutes ago. So we have one cobalt times its molar mass, grams per mole. Two times one is two nitrogens times its molar mass. Two times three is six oxygens, plus six from the water is 12 oxygens times its molar mass and six times two is 12 hydrogens times its molar mass. Add these up and sig figs works out the same way. It ends up we're only allowed to pass the decimal in our answer. And so it's exactly like calculating the formula mass of the compound, 291.03 grams per mole. And that's a conversion factor. All right, so we're gonna use a bunch of these now. 
So for example, let's say you weigh out some gold, you have 5.19 grams of gold. How many moles do you have? Well, dimensional analysis, unit advance from a starting point, how many moles of gold is equal to 5.19 grams of gold. The only conversion factor we need here is the molar mass. So you see how the molar mass is a conversion factor? If you look on the periodic table, guys, you'll see that the molar mass for gold is 196.967 grams per mole. Or, as a conversion factor, one mole of gold is equal to 196.967 grams of gold. Setting up our equation, um, we see that because we're starting with grams of gold, grams of gold has to be in the denominator here. So the other side of the equal sign goes in the top. Grams of gold cancel, we get moles of gold for answer. Three sig figs because of the 5.19, there's our answer. Next, um, this is going to be um, useful for you guys to see also. We know already um, that looking at a formula for a compound, if we look at, for example, this compound here, calcium phosphate, in one formula unit of calcium phosphate, there are three atoms of calcium, two times one is two atoms of phosphorus, and two times four is eight atoms of oxygen. Well. That means that we also know that in one mole, think about this, this is really important guys, in one mole of calcium phosphate, there are three moles of calcium, two moles of phosphorus, and eight moles of oxygen. So, we want to know how many moles of oxygen are there in 2.17 moles of calcium phosphate? Well, the units of answer a starting point, how many moles of oxygen is equal to 2.17 moles of calcium phosphate? The only conversion factor we need is this, which again comes from the formula of the compound. 2 times 4 is 8 moles of oxygen in 1 mole of calcium phosphate. So we can say that 1 mole of calcium phosphate is equal to 8 moles of oxygen. Setting up our equation, making sure that the moles of calcium phosphate cancel, and we get our answer 17.4 moles of oxygen. Next. We don't have a mole meter in our lab, so we can't usually measure moles directly, but we can measure grams. That's real easy. So let's say we measure out 8.36 grams of aluminum sulfate. We want to know how many moles of sulfur there are in that for, for, for whatever reason. So once more, guys, dimensional analysis. You know our answer, moles of sulfur. Starting point, 8.36 grams of aluminum sulfate. Conversion factors, well, the, um, what we do know like we were just talking about, that in one mole of aluminum sulfate, there are three times one is three moles of sulfur. And that what we want is moles of sulfur, which means if we can find moles of aluminum sulfate, we can get moles of sulfur, which is our goal. Well, we know grams of aluminum sulfate, right? Well, that's, we always do, well, if, we need, if we need moles and we have grams, we always use the molar mass. So write this down, guys, because this we're going to do this all the time. Write this down. This is really important. The conversion factor that converts between grams and moles, as well as moles and grams, is the molar mass. Please write that down because you're going to need that so many times. All right, so we, once we realize that, we write down the molar mass of aluminum sulfate as a conversion factor. One mole of aluminum sulfate is equal to that many grams of aluminum sulfate. So this number here, guys, I wrote down the molar mass. I didn't show the calculation this time. We've already seen the calculation of molar mass a few times now. But you should definitely do this yourself and make sure you get the same molar mass, this number right here, for aluminum sulfate as I do. And then, okay, from the formula, one mole of aluminum sulfate is equal to three moles of sulfur. Those are the only conversion factors we need. When we make sure that they cancel out, grams of aluminum sulfate cancel, Moles of aluminum sulfate cancel, give enough moles of give us enough moles of sulfur, and we have our answer. Next, so let's say we have 5.99 grams of this compound. It's a fairly large compound, but not that large. Um, we have 5.99 nanograms. How many grams of carbon do we have? Well, okay. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to show you this way. This is the the basic fundamental way to do it. It always works. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. So there's a few conversion factors. And I'll show you a little trick on the next slide. So <clears throat> let's just 
start plowing through our dimensional analysis. We want to know how many grams of carbon there are. So that's our units of our answer. And our starting point is going to be, you know, equal to or in 5.99 nanograms of this compound here. So the only connection we're going to have at this point between carbon and this compound is that in one mole of carbon, um, excuse me, in one mole of this compound, there are 20, because of this number right here, moles of carbon. So that means we need to convert the nanograms of this compound to moles of that compound so that we can get to moles of carbon. And see, once we get to moles of carbon, then the conversion factor that goes from moles of something to grams of something is, what did you just write down? Right, molar mass. So we just use the molar mass of carbon. So units of answer our starting point, how many grams of carbon equal 5.99 nanograms of it. Conversion factors, we know we're gonna need the molar mass of, car of the compound. So one mole of that is equal to that. Again, you know, check my work, um, get the molar mass 20 times 12.011, 25 times 1.008, 3 times 14.007, and 1 times 15.999. Add them all up, should get this. Um, we also know that there's one mole of carbon, um, excuse me, uh, 20 moles of carbon in one mole of the compound. And one mole of carbon is 12.011 grams. And this conversion factor here, which is actually the first one we're going to use, um, it's just using the prefix nano to go convert from nanograms to grams. So all I did here, guys, is I replaced this prefix here, the, na the n, nano, with what it means for the table of prefixes times 10 to the minus 9th. And I have my conversion factor. So what that does is that gets me from nanograms to grams of the compound so that I can use the molar mass to go from grams of the compound to moles of the compound, which lets me go to, mol go to moles of carbon and finally to grams of carbon. So when I plug everything into the equation, making sure that everything cancels and crossing everything out, nanograms cancel, grams of the compound cancel, moles of the compound cancel, moles of carbon cancel, and I get my answer. So 4.45 times 10 to the minus 9th grams, or 4.45 nanograms, same thing, of carbon. Um, by the way, check this right, do this work yourself. Um, make sure that we agree on the answer. Now let me show you a little trick here, guys. So, how many atoms of potassium are there in 2.23 grams of potassium chromate? Well, we could approach this the way we just did, only there would be, uh, well, we don't have the nanograms, but there would be another conversion factor at the end because once we got moles of potassium to get from moles to atoms, that's going to be the Avogadro's number conversion factor I showed you guys a little while ago. But watch this, okay? This is pretty, pretty neat. So let's start out doing our dimensional analysis. Um, we're going to know how many atoms of potassium is equal to 2.23 grams of potassium chromate. Now, we know that this, okay, the, in one mole of potassium chromate, there are two moles of potassium, right, from the formula. We also know that in one mole of potassium chromate, there's this many grams. This is the molar mass. So again, check my work. But this I get by calculating the molar mass of potassium chromate. So think about that, guys. Make sure it makes sense. In one mole of potassium chromate, we have this many grams. We also have this many moles of potassium. So we can say, this is the trick, that two moles of potassium is equal to 194.188 grams of potassium chromate. And that makes our work a lot easier and quicker and shorter because that lets us go from grams of potassium chromate to moles of potassium. And then all we have to do to get the atoms is use Avogadro's number. We could have done this trick on the previous example, but I wanted to show you the, the basic way first and then throw this at you. And by the way, if you don't like this, you can go back and you can use the other way all the time. It always works. So setting up our equation, how many moles of potassium is equal to that many grams of potassium chromate, making sure grams of potassium chromate cancel, and we get moles of potassium on the bottom, making sure that cancels, it puts out a Godger's number on the top, and we get the answer 1.38 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of potassium. And that's all there is to it, guys.